Well, this is Michelle again, and we're back to talk about how to create the base for our piece, which is going to be the Udu project, which is a Nigerian drum made out of clay. Uh, you should have seen the PowerPoint already, and I put up three videos relating to this project up on our module. And I'm going to show you how I'd like you guys to tackle this project. Okay, so I've started out with a slab here, and it's just under a half an inch thick. I think you can see that. Sorry, the clay and the cloth are pretty close in color. We'll try to do our best here. Okay, so I've taken my rolling pin. I've just rolled that out. Okay, remember, if you're rotating it, or sorry, if you're rolling it, you need to rotate it. Okay. I usually remind you guys in class if you're doing hand rolling, if you're rolling on newspaper or any kind of surface that's a little shiny, you need to keep rotating your clay. So otherwise, it adheres to what you're rolling on it and then it will no longer stretch out when you roll it. Okay, so pick it up after every roll. Okay, we don't want this to be too thin because this is going to be bearing weight when we put more clay on it. So we're starting out with a bowl shape, but it's also going to be the supporting base of a larger piece. So we want to make sure that it's not super thin. In the video, I think of one of the YouTube videos I showed you guys, there's a tribe of Nigerian women and they're making udus out of clay and they are working with the clay. So it's very thin, but they are master potters who have been doing those for decades, probably for generations. So we want to make sure we're giving ourselves a little more of a leg up because this is going to be our first time making it. It's going to be a little more challenging for us. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of saran wrap and I'm going to cover both sides the saran wrap. If you don't have saran wrap, you can use like light tissue paper that you use for um, when you're wrapping gifts. If you have cheesecloth, you can use a little cheesecloth. If you've got a thin piece of muslin, you can use that. Uh, saran wrap's really nice though, because you can cut through it when you're cutting the clay. I haven't tried it with the other materials, but that's what I'm using the saran wrap for. And also we want to make sure that anything we put the clay on has a resistance layer between the clay and the surface that you're using for a mold. I'm using this nice enamel bowl here. You might be using a household object and anything shiny clay is going to stick to. So we want to make sure there's a protective layer between those two. Okay, so I can use this to carefully flip over and I'm going to put another piece of saran wrap on the other side here. Okay. Come on guys. Okay, let's go ahead. Get nice and stretched out. Okay, start in the middle. It's like putting a screen protector on your phone. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissors and cut that apart. Okay, okay, so now I'll sit down because I think you'll get a better point of view. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's check with the mirror here. So normally I would do this next part with a green scraper, but apparently that didn't make it home with me from the classroom and I did not want to go back there again today. There are a few things I forgot, so we're going to learn a little improvising here. I'm going to clean off my 
black scraper here. Okay, and then I'm going to gently work that over the saran wrap. Okay, work from the inside towards the edges. And then I'll work out some of those bubbles and wrinkles. Okay. Take the edges of the saran wrap, flip that over. Go ahead. wetting it so it doesn't drag too much. The mud tools are better for this, but this is what I got. Okay. There we go. Okay. Smoothing that out. Okay. Working from the inside towards the outside edges. Okay. So now I'm going to take the outside rim of the form that I am using. I'm going to score a circle that's just a little larger than the outside rim. Okay. We're making it a little larger than the circumference of the rim of the bowl just because when we put this piece of clay on top of here it's going to lose some of its diameter because it's going to be popped out from the shape here. Okay, so the nice thing about using the saran wrap is that we can take scissors and carefully cut through the saran wrap and the clay. When you're done cutting, leave the saran wrap on there. So no jumping ahead and Peeling the saran wrap off there yet. Okay. This will make it a little easier to handle. You're in a small space like mine. It reduces the unpredictable factors. Okay. There we go. Got a nice circle here. Okay. Go ahead and take your form, whatever you're going to use, and center more or less your circle on the rim there. Okay. I'm using something that has not too much of a foot here, but I'm not too worried about this depression happening here. So I can smooth that out once uh, we take this off the mold. But for now, we're just going to worry about the outside part here. Okay. So I'm going to take my Fingers start in the center and start pressing that clay down the side of my form. Okay. Okay. So I can see got plenty of room there and that's good. If your clay was too long and extended past the rim here or um, got into this undercut here that can cause your clay to um, grab onto the mold and it can be very difficult to remove later so that's why I wanted to leave myself some room. Okay so now that I know I don't have too much I'm going to take this saran wrap off for now. Okay but I'm going to leave the saran wrap piece on the inside while we're working. Okay. We still don't want our clay to grab onto our form. This clay will stick to anything shiny. Okay, so I'm just gently working this down. That slab is flush with the mold there. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want the clay to get thin spots. I don't want too many depressions from my fingers. It's okay if you got a little texture, but I'm just trying to keep it kind of uniform looking right now. Okay, so now we're going to make a kind of a donut shaped base for this piece to sit in. Because what we're going to do after this base is formed, we're going to work on it the rest of the way from 
the base up, working up the sides. And if we did that and we just had this bare on the table like that and added clay to it, it would cause the bottom of your piece to get flat. So we want to keep this nice piece that we've got here nice and round. Okay. Otherwise your drum will look more like a jug and less like a nice classical udu. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just lightly put the saran wrap on there. You don't have to laminate it down on there. We're just using that as a resist because we're going to take another piece of clay, the thicker piece of clay. Okay. I'm going to form that into a donut shape. Okay. You don't have to worry about slipping it together. Just going to form those. Okay. So it's pretty critical that you form this so it conforms to the base of your piece there. I know sometimes after people watch the PowerPoint, they don't quite nail this part. So I'm going to spend a little time talking about this. So I'm using my thumbs and doing kind of a little pinch pot. So you don't have to press too hard. You're just beveling the inside. Okay. And you're going to take that, put it on the bottom of your piece, and gently press so it molds to the same angle as the bottom of your piece. Okay, so later you can clean this up and make it into a nice looking base for your piece, but right now it's just going to be kind of a practical stand for us to work on. So when we can rotate our piece around, it'll have this nice little nest to sit in. Okay, so you can see the way I've pressed it on there. If I could take that off. Okay. Take it off. That's fine. <laughs> okay, let's see if I do that. There we go. Okay. So you can see. Okay, it's nice and round on the inside there. So don't just leave it like this rounded coil because if you were trying to do this. And your clay, when we flipped it over, it sat on this round piece of clay. It would form this depression that would um, crease the bottom of your piece. Okay? So if we have it sitting in this nice little basin here, when we flip this over, okay, we don't have to worry about that. Okay? So the other thing that's important is we're not going to start adding more clay to the sides of this until it is set up a little bit. So fresh out of the bag clay, it's nice and easy to use, but as you've, as you've learned from some of your other projects, if you add too much weight onto the bottom of pieces while clay is still fresh, the clay that's on the bottom does not have the strength to support the added clay. So we're going to let this sit until it's no longer totally flexible. We don't want it to be completely leather hard because it would be difficult to um, add more clay onto there. So we're looking for kind of a sweet spot between totally out of the bag fresh and before leather hard, kind of a midpoint. Okay, and that's going to uh, the time that takes is going to vary depending on your circumstances. I'm an inside um, and I'm near a radiator. So it could be that this does not take me very long. So I need to monitor that. If you are working outdoors in, a, in rainy weather like we have right now, it could take you a little longer. Um, so you just need to monitor it. So the clay, when it's um, to the point we want it, we're still going to be able to pinch the surface a little bit and get the clay to be flexible, but it's not going to be as out of the bag fresh as it is right now. Okay. So the other thing is, is we want to go ahead and keep that on the mold for a little bit, but you don't want to leave it. If you're going to dry this overnight, you don't want to leave your bowl inside your piece because if the clay were to shrink as it dries a great deal, it could grab onto the form that you're using as the clay shrinks capacity that's going to reduce the circumference of your piece and the bowl is going to press from the inside out and that can even crack your piece or make this very difficult to remove so you don't want to make your life too difficult 
So it's pretty much this early part that needs the most time to monitor. Okay, so I'm going to briefly take this, just kind of flatten that down a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave the saran wrap in there. Since I have this turned over, I'll go ahead and just kind of take that and just level it out a little bit. Okay. I did a pretty decent job cutting this, so I don't need to go too crazy. If you do have a big piece that's like sticking out, I don't really have a large piece, but just to show you, if you do, you can just go ahead, take your fettling knife, just kind of come through there and level that off. Okay, because we're going to add strips that are slabs, but ribbon shaped. So it's kind of like using the coil technique, but you're using strips of slabs. Okay. And I know in one of the videos that I posted, the person is using two halves of a mold to create his shape. And that is actually a little more challenging than you think it might be. I think you'll have more control on your first time doing this if you use the technique that I am going to show you. So we'll stick to the script for that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that bowl back in there. Keep your saran wrap in there. Go ahead and rotate the whole thing over. Okay. Okay, so I've got some newspaper on my board here. Okay. Okay. So make sure that you've got a board that you can work on. And I like putting newspaper on there because you can use this as a turntable. If you don't have a Lazy Susan or one of the fancy turntables we've got at school, this is a pretty good, cheap, and easy, and accessible way to rotate your work. Okay, so I'll let that sit for now. If you're going to be away from your work for a long time, you might want to wrap it up, but um, for, I'm going to leave mine unwrapped, so uh, it'll be ready to go for my next video. Okay, all right, so uh, the next video will be adding strips of clay to the base of your udu. Thanks, guys.